Somehow, the Matrix franchise has returned to the big screen with The Matrix Resurrections, directed by Lana Wachowski. Several years after the events of the Matrix trilogy, Neo and Trinity are somehow still alive. Except Neo is once again Thomas Anderson, and Trinity is now known as Tiffany. Anderson is a successful video game designer, and his claim to fame is a popular trilogy of video games called The Matrix. We've gone meta, folks. But despite his fame and fortune, Thomas's life is not all wine and roses. He has gone through some serious mental issues, including a suicide attempt, and his therapist is, of course, prescribing him blue pills, because what else would they be? And he's still pining after Trinity slash Tiffany, but in this world, she is married to some other guy named Chad, because of course that's his name. But then his life gets completely turned upside down when he meets a woman called Bugs and an alternate version of Morpheus who inform him that, yes, the Matrix is actually real and he is indeed still trapped inside. I was not really sure how they would approach this considering the third movie, for better or worse, pretty definitively wrapped everything up. They're wasn't really anywhere to go from there. But somehow, Lana managed to pull a white rabbit out of her ass, and lo and behold, we have a fourth movie. And she certainly made some interesting choices. I cannot recall the last time I saw a movie that was about itself. I mean, the first act of this movie basically describes how the movie came to be. Thomas gets called into his boss's office and is informed their parent company, Warner Brothers, wants them to make a fourth Matrix game because sequels and reboots are all the rage now. Thomas doesn't want to do it at first, but it turns out Warner Brothers is going to go forward with the project with or without him, so he figures he might as well do it himself because he's not going to let someone else take away his baby. I mean, this is exactly what Lana said in an interview when she was asked why she decided to do the fourth movie. I'm not sure why she had to say this in an interview, because the movie itself already spells this out. I mean, it's not subtle. The Wachowskis don't do subtle. If you like subtlety, this is definitely not the movie for you. Just to give you another example, the movie is constantly forcing characters into some form of binary choice. Red pill, blue pill, etc. Before he gets drawn back into the Matrix video game, Thomas is actually working on a game called Binary. Good God. And apparently this version of the Matrix has given Neo some kind of alternate digital self-image, so when other people look at him, they see someone completely different from how Neo sees himself. Gee, I wonder what that could be referring to. But of course, anyone who is going to watch this movie is not looking for subtlety. They're not expecting anything particularly deep. I mean, yeah, we all thought The Matrix was deep when we first saw it. That was 20 years ago. We were dumb kids back then who didn't know any better. Then we all grew up and realized, yeah, it's still cool, but it ain't that deep. If you're coming back to The Matrix for a fourth time, especially after what happened the third time, you're here for the characters, the world building, the special effects, and the action sequences. Well, they got three out of four. It was cool to see Neo and Trinity again, and Reeves and Moss had no trouble fitting back into these roles. And while I'm sure we all would have liked to see Fishburne and Weaving return, Yahya Abdul-Mateen and Jonathan Groff both did a really good job as the new Morpheus and Smith. They are recreating these classic characters, but at the same time, they are putting their own spin on it. My only problem with Smith is his motivations were not always entirely clear. Neil Patrick Harris is pretty much the star of this movie. He was awesome as The Analyst, a program that created this new version of The Matrix and is posing as a therapist to keep an eye on Neo. He is such a good villain. I did notice in the trailer that there was a distinct lack of the green tint we previously saw whenever someone was inside The Matrix. And now we know why. They built a new Matrix, and they no longer need phones to get in and out of the Matrix, which is convenient considering we don't really have many phone booths or landlines in the real world anymore. And a lot of shit has changed in the real world since the end of the war, and now we have a lot of humans and machines that are on the same side, which I thought was very interesting. And they do, of course, have bullet time sequences. The movie even calls them that by name. Because, again, we've gone meta, and they actually try to one-up it a bit by having different characters move at different speeds in the same shots, and it looks pretty cool. The action sequences... This is where the movie stumbled a bit. They're not bad, but I don't think they were put together as well as they could have been. 
every single bot in the Matrix, because they don't have agents anymore, they have bots. Again, not subtle. These motherfuckers could not hit the broadside of a barn. I mean, if you have automatic rifles and you are shooting at someone who is running down a narrow corridor and you still can't hit them, you might as well pack it up and go home. And it makes it very difficult to build tension when our heroes clearly have no chance of dying. Morpheus once told Neo that once he was ready, he wouldn't have to dodge bullets. I didn't think it would be because the enemy forces were such terrible shots. And of course, Neo still has the power to stop bullets by force, but I'm not sure he needs to in this movie. He could probably just let all those bullets fly and not a single one is going to hit him. Even if a bullet is coming directly at his head, it will stop before it hits him and change direction in midair and go around him. So how am I gonna call this one? Well, I liked it better than Revolutions. How's that for damning with faint praise? I mean, it's not bad. I did not think it was a bad movie. It took some wild swings. Some landed, some did not. But I honestly wasn't bored. I don't regret watching it. Now, part of that may be because I saw it on HBO Max and I didn't have to pay for it, but still, I had fun. It's not great, but it's fine. And if you have HBO Max, I would definitely recommend giving it a watch. If you don't, I don't know if it's worth paying to see in a theater, but once it hits VOD, go for it. And that's all I have to say about The Matrix Resurrections. Till next time, take care.